So what was it like for you to, to be invited back and to say, hey, we want to have you on as a songwriter and, and not just a performer? What was that process like for you? Uh, it was a very interesting and kind of honestly it caught me off guard. I uh, wasn't expecting that um, and didn't really know what it meant. They were like, we'd like you to have, have you, you know, on board. And so at first I was like, you want me to be a coach? I mean, you already have four <laughs> coaches or three or whatever, four. And the time commitment at first made me really nervous. And they're like, no, we want you to just do what you do and help help actually cultivate some kind of, or stack the deck as far as like actually giving the winner a realistic launch pad from the get instead of like six months later when everyone's you know, obsessed with the next season's of Sons of Anarchy, you know, <laughs> and they've forgotten about the voice. Like, when it actually happens, give them something original that's not a cover of something that was cool 20 years ago. So, that's what we tried to do with Tumbling Down. We loved it. We, I mean, the, the measuring stick for us was when we played it for a couple other, like, we played it for Vinny Blanco a couple days ago, who's in, like 17 number ones. He was like, he, di he didn't even hear the final version, he just heard it once, he's like, that's a smash. He's like, that's, that's a hit on anybody. And we, that's the kind of reaction we were going for. Like, we wanted a song that, like, they don't have time to sit down and write songs during the show, so I, we understand that. But we wanted something that was good enough that, like, you can't guarantee, nobody can guarantee hits. Like, nobody. Because you just don't know. You never, it's always, like, a bit like, you know, throwing darts. Yeah, shooting a moving target. Shooting at a moving target. But I think what we were trying to do is, again, stack the deck and give them a better chance. And do the kind of song where we would, without question, pitch to an artist of the caliber of like Rihanna or a Kelly Clarkson, like somebody who's killer. Um, we wanted something that was good enough to do that. And so hopefully we pulled it off. You made a, what sounded almost like a little dig at other shows when you said tonight you didn't want the basically like I'm sailing over a rainbow on a mountain on a unicorn <laughs> I hate type those song. songs. I hate those <laughs> songs. The songs suck. Like, like it's one thing like last year the, the dude that won covered uh, I Believe I Can Fly, which is amazing. Like I, that's one of those in the category of songs I wish that I wrote. Um, and R. Kelly, I mean, follow our Twitter feed, you'll know how much I love R. Kelly, but, um, A, doing a cover is whatever, like, that's cool, but, like, anybody can do that. Um, it's karaoke. And, B, those songs, they're like, like, this is my moment, now I'm here, you know, like, those songs, like, who actually sits around listening to that stuff? It's like, in, in, in 20 years of of uh, these kinds of shows, like I can't name one that's actually connected. Like even Kelly Clarkson was the first person to one. She did one of those types of songs a moment that, like this? That, that, that lasted, you know, it exploded. But then the real hit was Indep Miss Independent, right? Which was the actual first single. So our thought was, why don't we just skip steps A and B and go right to C, which is listen to a song that you actually connect. And the first thing Tess Ann said, I gotta say this for the record, the first thing, she got on the phone three days ago when we were doing the final vocal. And she said, I just want to say thank you so much for not writing some trying to be inspirational, like standing on a mountain song. <laughs> Literally quote unquote what she said to me. She was like, I was so scared you were going to do an inspirational song and I was going to hate it. She was like, you did a proper like, she was like, this is just like a great song. It's about love and heartbreak and staying together through hard times. And she's like, I actually relate to it. And I think hopefully America will too. So. One last wrap. question. What, um, can I ask one more question? Boxes of briefs. Box of briefs. All right. Well, <laughs> that one will take offline, but I want to know, was it hard to write a song not knowing? You had three very different singers here. It was, you can ask him, yeah, that was a nightmare. Yeah. <laughs> nightmare is a strong word, but it was like, it was, we didn't, this is like stupid of me, but like I assumed going into this, oh, they're going to know who's going to win. Like, you know, <laughs> it's, I know it's not rigged, but you know, they're going to know. They had no idea. So every time we'd ask them, can you give us like, does it, what's it rhyme with? Like, who does, what does the name rhyme with? Is it like Schmeshman or like, like Gil Kraplin, you know? And they're like, no, we can't, we honestly don't know. Like we literally, we can, all we can tell you is that like almost every week, Test hands work almost every week on iTunes, but everybody knows that. So we roll the dice. All right, we have to do a song like Will's version of this, which I think, unfortunately, well, I don't know. I don't think anyone's gonna hear. Blew us out of the water. He has a version of this that like blew us away. Completely different mix. It's like different a Kings vibe, of everything. Leon version of this song, and I love it. They all, all three of them, killed it. But um, ultimately, like you know, Test Sand, we. We rolled the dice and we thought we need to do a song that works for all three of them, but like if Tess Sand ends up winning because she's won so much, 
it has to connect with her. And then that's the first thing she said was like, I connect with this song. So.